blog readers, this is Captain Dave. I want to share with you a little tech tip today. And it's all to do with making your float rig do two jobs and do it well. I've been fishing lately on some of these blowing 20 knots, freezing cold, new moon, full moon kind of days. Tides just astronomically high. So what's it do? It tells me we're not going to do nothing up in the river. Let's go up into the shallow water. And as an example, I've been fishing in Mill Cove. Mill Cove, there's no water in there. So like normally, I wouldn't even bother with it. But when you get these astronomical tides, the wind pushing the water up the river, and Mill Cove floods up pretty well, it enables somebody like me to take a 26-foot boat and go fish up there in the shallows near the submerged grass, some shell bars, oyster beds, things like that. Normally, when you'd be up in a shallow area like that, you would be, it would be very easy to use something like a popping cork. This here is a popping cork that's a clicker cork also, and this works very well. I've caught lots of fish with it, but one thing about it is it's so one-dimensional. I'm not going to carry all these rods and reels for every single rig. So what I want to do is I want to make some noise to attract the fish, especially trout, and I want to do it with my regular float rig. How do you do that? Well, I'm not going to be able to make it exactly like this where it's popping. You have the chugging or the clicking as loud as these can be. But I've come to, some, I've come to realization that a little bit is better than nothing. So I've had some really good success. And I think sometimes the reason why I might drift the same exact area as somebody else, okay? And I'm drifting along, and I lean my float over, and I rattle it, and all of a sudden my float goes down, and somebody else didn't, okay? And how that works is here's a standard float rig, right? And we've got our stopper dot here that we move up and down our line, well, what we do up in the shallow water is we peg it. You move the float all the way to the top of, or move the stopper knot all the way to the top of the float. And your float's stationary now. It's not going nowhere. Okay. Then, of course, as usual, like I always set up all mine, what I have is a length of line and then my, my trout lead down here. And off of this would come my about 24-inch leader, my hook, and my live shrimp because I'm making this as shallow as possible. And at the same time, I like how this sets up here because it keeps my shrimp down in the water because that's about where the water would be and my leader's coming off, but it's keeping my shrimp down in the water. My shrimp can swim around and come to the surface and go down if it wants, okay? But it's working out very well. We're catching a lot of fish just using a float rig up next to submerged grass. But I want to step it up a notch. I wanted to make some noise, like the old popping cork. And how I've been doing that is I take my standard float that I use here, which is soft foam. And what I'm doing is on the very bottom here, I'm taking and I'm putting in small glass rattles. If you see that, that's maybe about an inch, three quarters of an inch long got some little BBs inside and it's glass okay and how they close off the glass is right here it's pinched to a point you can pick these up at most every uh, decent tackle shop okay and they come in various sizes but don't get too crazy you don't want them too big and the reason being is because what I'm going to be doing is I take a Phillips head screwdriver and I take the bottom of my float especially these floats nice soft open cell foam and I poke a hole in it and I push the foam down and I take my glass rattle and I insert it down in there and push it all the way down then after it's in there I kind of push the hole back together and I put a dab of super glue on top of it. All right. So now when I peg my float, 
I can make it rattle. It's not too terrible of a sound, and it's actually surprising how much noise it still does make, being that the rattles are insulated by the foam, and then, of course, the float is in the insulation of the water. But low tones travel far. So as I'm fishing, I might be fishing right next to somebody else, and we're both drifting in the same area, and I'll get bit sometimes. Now there's no scientific reason here of exactly why this is working. Maybe sometimes it's just dumb luck. But for me, it's that one little edge that might make the difference, and sometimes I believe it is making the difference. Because if I'm in current and I'm drifting along, I'll hold back on my float as the current wants to push it. It'll kick up a little bit, and I'll rattle the float with my rod tip. And I'll stand my float back up and continue on my drift over a shell bar or something. Because what that is doing is you're drifting along, you thumb your, thumb your spool of your reel a little bit, it kicks this up, because you're in current, you always want to have some current. So it kicks this up a little bit like that, rattle it a little bit, which in turn my shrimp is kind of kicking up, stand it back up, and let it drift. My shrimp kind of drags down, he might snap also. And like a top water lure, because that's what this is all about, like a top water lure, like a mirror lure top dog, has a rattle in it, and as you're walking the dog, it goes, chick, 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 chick. that's attracting the trout. The trout hone in like a magnet on that sound. When they get there, they see, oh, that's a mullet, and they bust it. Well, we're not on this. You're not attracting them to eat this, although some fish come up and do try to bite at this, but you make the noise. He sees the shrimp, goes for the shrimp. Same exact thing. So that's my tech tip, is how to make your float a little more versatile. Let it do two jobs when you're up in shallow water. Okay, and the, re and the two jobs is that the next spot I could go to, I don't have to change rigs, I don't have to do nothing. I set my depth at the next spot, which is 10 feet deep. I set my depth with my stopper knot up here, and we go fishing as usual with the float rig. But then when we go into the shallow water, this one little thing, we peg it, I'm at three feet of water, I got about three foot of rig, and now I'm adding a little extra versatility to the rig by adding a little noise. Okay, that's your tech tip. And uh, I'll probably be doing a couple more tech tips as things come along. So check back on the blog frequently. Thanks a lot.